Okay, in this video, I'm going to show you a proof of the Fraunhofer diffraction for n harmonic os oscillators. Now, this one is a proof, it's done in usual optics courses in college, so I'm pitching it out at somebody who's done a small bit of uh, a small bit of college mathematics at this stage and also knows about things like superposition of waves and so on. So, the first thing I'm going to do is define my electric field vector E is equal to the initial amplitude E0 times the complex exponential of the k vector, which is the wave number vector, times the displacement vector minus the angular frequency times the time. So if we have n harmonic oscillators, we're going to have, uh, we'll say, this plus the same thing again, plus the same thing again, plus the same thing again. The only thing changing each time will be the r vector, the displacement vector. So if we add n harmonic, oscill n harmonic oscillators, we're going to get the following. E0, 1, times e to the uh, i k r1, minus omega t, plus e0, 2, times e to the i k r2, minus omega t, plus dot dot dot, okay? I suppose you can see the, see the, you can see the pattern at this stage. The next thing you need to do is, is to, we'll say, start pulling out some of the factors. So we can say e is equal to, pull out e0, all right? Then we pull out the complex exponential e to the negative i omega t, like so. And then, uh, oh, by the way, excuse me, I should probably say as well that I'm going to assume that each of the initial amplitudes are the same, so I can pull out e0 rather than having you know n different uh, uh, initial amplitudes. All right? So we can next multiply, we'll, we'll have to multiply this by the, the factor, which is going to be something like e to the i k r1 plus e to the i k r2 plus e to the i k r3 plus dot dot dot. All right? So the next thing I'm going to do is actually pull out e to the i k r1. So we're going to get e times the initial amplitude e0 times e to the i, ne negative i omega t, and I'm going to pull out e to the i k times r1. And what we'll be left with as, as a result of that is we're going to have 1 plus e to the i, and this is going to be k r2 minus k r1 plus dot dot dot. Okay, whereby this time we're going to be, the next one is going to be r2 minus r1, the second one, third one is going to be r3 minus r1, and so on. Now, it has been defined when you superpo superpose waves, uh, de the following definition is made, that when you have k uh, r1 minus k r2, we call that another letter delta. Alright, you see these deltas everywhere when you're dealing with uh, wave optics, okay? So, you can see this is a delta, okay? And R3 minus R1 is going to be another delta. A different one, but a delta all the same. So what we need to do now is make a another, another substitution. So, we're going to say the following. We're going to say the electric field is equal to the initial amplitude of the electric field times e to the negative i omega t times e to the i k r1 times 1 plus e to the i delta plus e to the i2 delta plus e to the i3 delta plus dot 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 all right now knowing our laws of powers and all this sort of thing we can see well e to the i two e to the i2 delta e to the i2 delta is the same as e to the i delta uh, e to the i delta times e squared. All right, and as a result, because we have all these powers, so we'll have e to the i 3 delta, it's going to be e to the i delta times e cubed. Okay, we're going to have an, in we're going to have an increasing uh, exponential set of powers. And for those of you doing a good bit of mathematics, you may realize that this is actually, it can be approximated using a binomial expansion. Now, I'm not going to get into the, the actual, the, the doing of the binomial expansion. Okay, so I'm just going to tell you the following, right? You can have, you can use those powers, you can manipulate the powers a small bit, okay? But the end result really is that the electric field is equal to the initial amplitude of the electric field times e to the negative i omega t times e to the iota again times k times r1 times. And we're going to have the following, we're going to have the exponential, I'm going to write, it's just easier if I write it this way from now on. e to the i n delta, negative 1, divided by e to the, well, the exponential of i delta, 
negative 1 again. Like so. Okay, that's just the binary wind approximation. So if you're if you're struggling with that and you say, oh, oh my god, how am I supposed to come up with that myself? As I've said it plenty of times in the past, that this is something like Fraunhofer when he when he was coming up with these sorts of things, he didn't he didn't work that out in, in the space of a minute, he didn't work it out in the space of the day a day. Maybe he did, but it took a serious amount of thinking. Alright? So you can either uh, spend all your time trying to work out how these guys did it two hundred years ago, or you can accept it learn how they did it and then learn learn the skills and just accept it and then progress from there okay so like I said he did this well, not 200 years ago he did it actually reasonably recently but that's beside the point so the next thing is a small bit of a sleight of hand because we're, we're trying to get sine squares and sines in this okay and if we're also we have these complex exponentials there so we know that e to the i theta minus e to the negative i theta over 2 is equal to the sine of theta so what we're going to try and do from now is try and manipulate this formula to get something like this. All right, and how we're going to do it, like I said, is a small bit of a sleight of hand. So we're going to say e is equal to e zero times e to the negative i omega t times e to the iota again times k r one. Now the the sleight of hand is I'm going to pull out the following factor, and I'll show you why in a moment. But just bear with me. So it's going to be the exponential of i n delta over 2 divided by the exponential of um, i delta over 2. Alright? And as a result, what we'll be left with inside the brackets is e to the i n delta over 2 minus e to the minus i n delta over 2 divided by e to the i delta over 2 minus e to the minus i delta over 2 which looks very much like our definition of our sine okay so of course we we'll say this factor here corresponds to the to uh, dividing the down here and this corresponds to dividing down up up here all right so where do we go as a result of this now bear with me while i just clean my board Alright, what I'm going to do next is just put straight in the fact that we had signs there. So just going to, I'm going to rewrite this. Alright, so if you're following, uh, definitely if you're doing it on a piece of paper, you'll be able to do the following. So it's e0 times e to the negative i omega t times e to the iota times k times r1 times e to the i delta over 2 n minus 1. Alright, that's just a small bit of manipulation formula again times the sine of n delta over 2 over the sine of delta over 2 okay now if you're saying you know what to do there if you just look at the formula small but and you you'll and just compare the formulas you'll see that it, that is exactly what I've written down so the following can be written down okay we're going to say that the the radiance the radiance is equal to the square of the electric field that's the first thing so what happens if we square our electric field okay we're going to get the following. You're going to get the irradiance. By the way, the irradiance is the power. Okay, it's kind of it, it's it's units of watts. So we're going to get the initial irradiance I zero times e to the i times k r one minus omega t times e to the i delta over two times n minus one. Now I'm just going to get rid of this sine. Let's say I'm just going to call it sine over sine. You know there's another factor there. All right, just to get it out of my way here. Then we're going to have a sine squared of n delta over 2 divided by a sine squared delta over 2. And we need to multiply by that by the following e to the negative i kr1 minus omega t and another factor which I'm just going to write down here e to the negative i delta over 2 times n minus 1. So there's the square part, there is the square component. Alright, so just there, there are the two square components there. That's pretty straightforward stuff. I just couldn't write it down in one go. And as a result of that, because if you look, there's a positive iota and a negative iota, positive iota and negative iota, we're going to get the following. I is equal to I0 times sine squared n delta over 2 divided by sine squared delta over 2. And wow, wasn't that painful. 
Alright, so thanks for watching. Please pass it down to your friends and subscribe to my channel.